Today's paper is Yellow 9000, Better, Faster, and Stronger. The name of the paper is Yolo 9000, but the model is uh, better known as Yolo V2. Uh, this model is trained on object detection and classification datasets. Uh, therefore, in this Yolo V2 model, it can detect over 9000 object categories. It achieves a MAP of 76.8 on VOC 2007 dataset with FPS of 67. Um, also, the model is able to achieve up to 78.6 MAP with 40 FPS. In this model, YOLO V2, uh, at the point of publication, uh, it outperformed previous models like Faster RCNN and SSD. Before getting into the details of YOLO V2, uh, let's first briefly review the previous YOLO V1 model. Uh, the first YOLO model used a backbone inspired by the Google Lynette for image classification. Uh, this is shown in the left figure. Uh, it has uh, 24 convolutional layers with two fully connected layers. Uh, the final output of the feature map is uh, 7 by 7 and it had a dimension of 30. Uh, this is also displayed on the right figure as well. At each grid point, it has a vector of size 30 because the model predicts two boxes per grid. So each bounding box representation needs five dimensions uh, for a, let's say, center point x, y and width and height of a box. And if we add the confidence score, that becomes five for representing a box. And by adding the number of classes that it wants to represent uh, in the first Yellow V1 model, it has uh, 20 classes, so it resulted to having a dimension of 30. Now, there are many changes made in the second version of the Yellow model. Um, I'll just go through the components added to the Yellow V2 model very quickly. Um, so first, all convolution layers are equipped with batch normalization. Um, it also uses a larger image size. So in yellow v1, it used input image resolution of size 224, but in yellow v2, it uses 448. Um, also, fully connected layers, which was used in yellow v1 model, was removed. Uh, instead, the model uses fully convolutional layers with anchor boxes to increase the accuracy of the model. The prior sizes of these anchor boxes are also obtained using IOU-based k-means clustering um, on the training set. This way of obtaining the boxes is better than relying on handcrafted anchor box sizes. Um, as it's shown in the right figure, the authors used cluster of size 5 to get a good trade-off between recall and model complexity. In the first yellow model, it didn't have any constraints on location prediction, so it directly uh, predicted the points of a box uh, using the regression method. And this made training of the model very unstable. However, in the V2 model, the output of box prediction is made using a sigmoid activation function. So the values for predicting box coordinates are in range between 0 to 1. Um, on the right is the figure that shows how this sigmoid activation function is used. Uh, the values that the model should predict are Tx, Ty, Tw, and Th. Uh, Bx and By uh, are the center location of the bounding box. I mean, these two values represent the center location of a bounding box. Um, to get this, it uses uh, CX, CY plus the shift value found by the um, sigmoid function. Uh, CX, CY is the location of the grid, and TX, TY are the value from the model. Um, instead of directly predicting BX and BY, uh, it bounds the value by using the sigmoid function to the model output X, uh, TX and TY. Um, the size of the box from the anchor prior, uh, BW and BH, is also obtained by scaling the prior anchor box with the model output values TW and TH. Um, 
uh, PW and PH right here uh, are the anchor priors obtained by uh, k-means clustering I explained earlier and BW BH are the scaled bounding box dimensions uh, yeah that's all for the uh, direct location prediction uh, the yellow v2 model additionally uses a multi-scale training technique to let the model see objects in different scales it also uses fine grained features so meaning the model uh, uses not only the final 13 by 13 output feature map but it also makes use of um, 26 by 26 feature map in the earlier layer so what it does is it maps the previous feature map of size 26 by 26 to the final feature map 13 by 13 feature map and by doing this the model is able to uh, detect uh, small objects better now for faster speed the model uses a backbone called darknet 19 it's composed of 19 convolutional layers and five max pulling layers and when training this model yellow v2 it's first trained on a image net classification data set that has uh, 1000 classes and on this data set it's trained about 160 epochs uh, once this model is trained on a classification data set it's further trained for detection task using both classification and object detection data sets uh, if the network sees a detection data set on the training, uh, backpropagation is made based on the full yellow v2 loss function. And if it sees a classification image, then it only backpropagates the loss from the classification specific parts of the architecture. Um, for detection training, the uh, last convolutional layer, which was used to train the classification uh, data set, is removed and instead um, three three by three convolutional layers are added however if a classification data set is used together for object detection training the uh, number of total classes increases uh, like shown in the right figure the class representation of cocoa detection data set and image net classification data set is different uh, we can see that in cocoa detection data set it's the, the labels, class labels, are general, uh, like dogs and cats, but in the classification data set, uh, it's more specific. It has a class labels like um, breed of a dog, like Yorkshire Terrier or uh, Bed Bedlington Terrier. So the authors were not able to directly combine all these classes to one just by increasing the number of classes. So instead, they used this thing called word tree. Uh, this is possible uh, because ImageNet classification dataset had a parent information of the leaf class labels. Uh, so as shown in the bottom image in the right figure, uh, word tree has a hierarchical tree that relates the parent class and the subclasses together. So using this uh, enabled the authors to merge classification and detection datasets together. So now when, when yellow v2 is trying to detect objects uh, it f traverses down the tree from the top and it takes the uh, the highest confidence path at every uh, split point until it reaches some threshold now in this table it shows the ablation study of the techniques introduced in the paper uh, the original yellow v1 model performance is shown in the bottommost row uh, the the leftmost column so that's the yolo v1 model so on voc 2007 data set it achieved mean average precision score of 63.4 and as more techniques are added to the yolo v2 model from batch norm to high resolution detector the performance goes up dramatically up to 78.6 Lastly, um, here's the result of YOLO v2 model on Pascal VOC 2012 test set. Uh, we can see that with an input resolution of 544, it achieves a mean average precision score of 73.4. And this is a lot higher than the YOLO v1 model, which achieved 
57.9 and it's still it's also better than uh, two stage detectors uh, like faster rcnn which achieved map of 70.4 and it's on par it's comparable to the models like ssd with input resolution of size 512 link to the paper and some useful resources will be provided in the description that's all for today and i'll see you next time with a new paper